Hello, good day viewers. You're welcome to my channel. Very quickly today, we are going to be looking at the predicted question for the NECO 2022 titration practical. If you are new to this channel, you are in the right channel, you are in the right channel, you are new to this channel, just click on the on the subscribe button there so that you can get educative and informative videos when it is posted. So if you are new to this channel, you are a chemistry teacher, you are a student, if you are new to this channel, you are in the right channel. And I'm trusting God that this channel is going to help you as far as chemistry is concerned. So for my subscribers, let me say a very big thank you. Thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for the comments. They are wonderful. They are motivating. God bless you guys. I love you. So very quickly today, let's see what we have for 2022 NECO volumetric analysis. That's the chemistry practical. And please, I want us to pay attention. I have said this so many a times that if you follow what is being taught on this channel, if you adhere strictly to what is being taught on this channel, you will not find all these external examinations difficult. You can check previous exams. Most of the questions we predicted were 90% correct as far as those questions are concerned. I have said it earlier before now that this question I am about to actually solve here, this predicted question, we are not saying it is the same question that will be coming out on that day. Okay? We, are, we have been lucky for so many years, we have been predicting the exact question. But we are not saying this is the exact question. But I, I, I am assuring you 90% that if you follow what is being taught on this channel and you listen carefully, you should be able to do those exams effortlessly, conveniently. You can check comments in the previous videos that was, that was posted, they have been wonderful. So please pay attention, take your pen, you know, listen attentively, watch the video to the end so that you can see how the question is going to come and how you can tackle them. So I'm, I'm trusting that we are going to have an exciting moment now as far as this question is concerned. So let's see what I have for us for today. This is a predicted question for the YA. And what is the question? We are working with as per the question we are working with HNO3 and this is a base now if you look at this 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 is a base that they did not actually give us they omitted some values because they said S2CO3 we don't know what the X is like so they might be giving you you know giving you your HNO3 I have said that so many a times in my titration practical you will always be giving a particular value to get the unknown they are giving you very very sure so they cannot omit the to know is either the standardized one you use it to look for the one that is unknown either of the two but this is just a predicted one i'm feeling like they might ask us to actually do this so the question is a is a solution of 9.3 gram per dm cube of hno3 b is a solution containing 1.05 gram in 250 centimeter cube of x2co3 put a into the bread and titrate against 20.0 centimeter cube or 25.0 cm like a portion of B using material as the indicator. All these things will be provided in our various centers. So let's quickly get to work. Put A into the bullet. So this solution A to be labeled in your center. This is my solution B. This is my solution A. This is my solution B. Just follow the instructions. They are not difficult question. Put A into the bullet. So I'm putting A into the bullet now. Following the instructions carefully. Putting A into the bullet. Putting A into the burette. Okay, so we have A in the burette. Let's check it so that it will be on the zero mark so that we don't have issues. Let me adjust this a bit. Let me adjust this burette a bit. Okay, so that I can just run. Okay, so I want it to be on my zero mark. Okay. I hope this is clear. So we are on the zero mark very quickly. So what do we do? Let's let's have our table. Our our bullet reading is now. Our bullet readings. This is in Okay. So, 
a few things here. So I have my final readings. Okay. My initial readings. Rough. Okay, it's in the back here. I'll be taking three titrations. So my first two is in the back here. And my second, I'll be running three, so one will be for my own and two. So I have my final piece tablets. Very, very important. There are marks for these. Make sure you can read them there. I have my volume of acid used. I hope I do it. Okay. So I have done like that. Okay. So I have my initial readings now. You can see that on the zero to zero mark. So before I start titration, very important, don't forget, they say I'm using material range as the indicator. So let your indicator be on your table. What is the indicator? That is material range. And your volume of pipette too. Very important. Let it be recorded. The volume of pipette has 25. That's the volume of pipe that I'm using. Is it that 20 or 25? I'm using 25. So let's get to work. So zero. I remove my phone. Very important. That's one of the precautions. If you have been used to my channel, you should have known that. So very quickly now, this is my base. My pet in 25 of this. So let's put my pet. So we have 25 of these running into the conical flux. I hope you are following. There's nothing to worry about. That's the reason why on this channel we do it step by step. So this is my material range. I want to add two drops, two or three, but I'm using two drops. So this is one. And this is the second. Okay. You can see that now. So let's start our nitration. So I'll stop until I, when I see a change in color. You can see this is a light yellow. You can see that now. So let's see. So a change in color means it has neutralized. So let's, let's see. Let me adjust this because of the readings so that I can take the readings away. Okay. So you have to be careful. Careful. You can see that now. Very interesting. So I have I have thirteen point seven zero. I have thirteen point seven zero. So my initial zero point zero zero. Okay. Well, so my final reading is thirteen point seven zero. Very good. So. That is done. Let me just put it here. Okay. Let me wash it a bit. Let me just. So, swell the flux. That's the first one very quickly. You go again. The second one, we 
Wait, the second one. Do again the second one. Very fast. You have to be time conscious. Okay? Turning it down. Twenty-five centimeters back, you don't forget. So I'm starting from there. Because of my time, I don't want to waste time. You have to be time conscious in your exam. You can see, so my initial now, I'm not refilling. If I have refilled, the initial will still be 0.00, .00 but now I'm not refilling. So I'm starting from this very particular point, which is 13.70. Because if my first hydration is 13.0, the volume of my bread is around 50. So can you see that? So I don't need to refill because of time. So I just have to start from there. So with this, I have my two drops. I have my two drops. One, two. You can see that we we'll go again. Go again. Thank you. Use this. And then faster. Thank you. Gently. When you are seeing a have to be gentle, you know, and see that you see it about changing the you can add in drop. Now you can see I'm adding in drop so that I don't exceed the end point. Drop. You can see that. Okay. You can see that. So I have I adjust this. Okay? Very correct. I have 27.10. Can you see that now? So from here again, you know, the volume of this is around 50. And if you look at my average, it's around 13. So I can still start. I'm not refilling again. So my initial year is going to be 27.10. Then I start from there again because you are time conscious. You have to be time conscious. You don't have all the time, okay? You have all the time, so you have to be time conscious. You have to be time conscious. Then we go for the last one. Now. You have to be time conscious because you are doing three questions, so you don't need to take a whole lot of time doing this. Okay, so I go for the third time. So go for the third time, which is the last time. Some other person, you know, some people we have, we, we, we say they have raw first, second, third is allowed. But for me, because of time, I'm doing raw first and second. You cannot as well do that. There's nobody that will penalize you for that. So one, two. Okay, we go again now. From my initial point, I go again. See that now? Can you see it? Very clear. So, we'll check the readings again. Okay, so I have 40.50. So, very clear now. You can, you can see practical, very clear. So, let's subtract to have our volume of acid. Here we are going to be only 13.70. Let me use my calculator. Here, yeah. 27.10. 
plus 13.70 minus 13.70 if you have 13.40 10.40 going to this one to 40.50 minus 27.10 after 10.40 okay so from here now what do we do very quickly the question says calculate your results and calculate the average volume of acid use. so i want to calculate my average volume of acid used so i'm using this to because it's a bit far from them so i'm using this so I have 13.40 plus 13.40 divided by 2. So my average volume of acid used is equal to that's 13.40 plus 13.40. That's 26.80 divided by 2. So my average volume of acid used definitely is going to be 13.40 centimeter. Okay, please pay attention to your units, very, very important. Pay attention to your units, very, very important. Okay, we move to the next question. They said, from your result and information provided, write a balanced equation for the reaction. They didn't give the equation for this reaction. Okay, and they say the, the, the reaction is between HNO3 and a triazocarbonate. Very important. The, the reaction is between HNO3 and a triazocarbonate. And if you remember, one of the chemical properties of acid is that they react with triazocarbonate to liberate what? They liberate a salt, they liberate water, they liberate CO2. So it is that knowledge of that you use in writing the equation because this is missing. Definitely. So, but you will only get the equation of the reaction if you understand the chemical properties of acid, and that's what I've said. They are reaction with triazocarbonate. When they react with triazocarbonate, definitely NO2 will be like that. So, I can say the equation now for the reaction, which is Roman figure one now, the equation is between HNO3, the aqueous form, K plus X2CO3. To give. So let's see this now. This becomes, can you see? We have this is a charles of carbonate now. I hope you are following. This is a charles of carbonate. So we are going to have this, this plus. So this represented the eggs, the element we don't know. So we're giving us CO2 plus A2. This will be gaseous. Okay, so from there, let's balance the equation. Is the equation balance? Hydrogen here is one. Hydrogen here is two. So we can balance this equation. Okay, so let's see now. Hydrogen here is two. Hydrogen here is two. Balance. Nitrogen here is two. Nitrogen here is one. So we can add. So yeah, let's check it again. Very important. That's the reason why they are giving you the equation to balance properly. They might be giving you. So hydrogen two, hydrogen two balance. Nitrogen is two. Nitrogen is two balance. Oxygen is six. Three times two that's six plus three that's nine. Oxygen here is three times two six plus two eight plus one nine balance. The X is two. Yeah, X here two is two. Carbon is one. Carbon is one. The equation is balanced. I hope that is clear. The equation is balanced now. So we can proceed. We are done with number one. Number two, they said calculate the concentration of A in mole per DMP. Concentration of A in mole per DMP. So we go to our A. What is our A? They are giving us 9.3 gram per DMQ of HNO3. And I've told you. For every titration question, I gave us that formula, very important. First of all, see if your mole is equal to mass of molar mass, which is the general you know, formula for calculating mole first. 
can it solve it? So the first thing I will see is this is the mass they have given us. And I can calculate the molar mass from HNO3. Definitely, that formula is going to solve it, which is mole. That's mole per DMP. Mole is equal to mass in gram per DMP over the molar mass, which is in gram per mole. Okay, can we see that? So, which is mole? No, you can have. This one is in mole per DMQ. Very important. This one is in gram per DMQ. Okay, and this one is, is in gram per mole. So, you see that gram grams to gram, then you have a mole per DMQ. I have that square. So, let's input the, what they gave us. So, the mass they gave us in the question, can we have that 9.3 gram per DMQ? Okay. So I can calculate the molar mass. All these solutions, all these your solvents must be in your book. HNO3. So and from there, we are going to have the molar mass to be equal to. They are giving us the atomic masses. Hydrogen here is 1 plus nitrogen here is 14 plus 16 times 3. That will be 1 plus 14 plus 48. And that what? 1 plus 14, 1 plus 14, plus 48. That was going to be giving us 63, as 63 gram per mole. I hope you are following. So from there, we can now use our formula here, which is mole is equal to our mass now, 9.3 gram per DMQ over 63 gram per mole. This we cancel this. So what is our mole now? That is our mole. That's 9.3. 9.3 divide 63. That's 0. That's 0 0.14 approximately 8. Because it's 0.1476. So 0 0.148 mole per DMP. So please make sure when you are calculating mole. We are in three significant figures. Very important. Three significant figures. Very Okay, that's sorted. Then we move to the next one. What's the next question? Calculate the concentration of A in mole per DMP. That's done already. Calculate the concentration of B in mole per DMP. Okay, same question, but let's see if this formula is going to solve it. They give us our mass here yeah, 1.05 gram in 250. Please note that. They give us 1.05 gram in 250 meaning and i've said it so many times on this channel that the standard measurement in chemistry standard measurement in chemistry is around one dmq or one thousand centimeter cube but they gave us this one in 250 very good we can still convert to one thousand because it's 250 so we can still say the mass is given okay but let's see we want to see if we can use this that's what i'm actually Checking. So we can have our mass, since they gave us a 250, we can convert to 1000 and get our mass in gram per DMQ. But can we get our molar mass? Let's see. Something is missing here, which is X. So there is no way we can use this formula because we don't know the value of X. The atomic mass of X is not given here. So we cannot use this. So what do we use? We use our penetration formula, which is our CA, VA over CB, VB, which is equal to NA over NB. I hope you are following. So our CA, that's the concentration of our C, that is 0 0.148 mole per DMQ. Please make sure you indicate all this. Your volume of acid, that's a chiral value, 13.40 centimeter cube. Your concentration of base, that's what we are looking for. I hope you are following. Your volume of base is already indicated here, 25 centimeter cube. Your number of as that's the reason why they said you write a balance equation for the reaction. And if you have not balanced this very well, you can see it will affect all other solutions. So please, you have to be very careful. So your number of acid here is one, and your number of base here, your number of acid, sorry, is two, according to our balancing of the equation here. Why your number of base? That's one. That's one molecule of this transition. Two molecules of transonitry. So from there we input all this to get our concentration of base. So our CA has 0.148 times what is our VA 13.40 over what is our CB that's what we are looking for times what is our VB 25 is equal to 
number of moles of acid here, yeah, that's two, over number of moles of base, that's one. I hope you are following. Very simple. If you follow this, you should not find the exam paper. Then from here, we cross multiply and make CB the subject. So CB becomes 0 0.148 times 13.40 times 1 over 25 times 2. So our CB here becomes, let's use our calculator now. I hope you are following. Okay. So we have 0 0.148 times 13.40. Divide 50, that's 25 times 2. Zero point one four eight times thirteen point four zero divided by fifty. So we have zero we have zero point zero three nine. Let's approximate 97 mole per dm. We have told you, please ensure that when you are calculating concentration, especially for this acid and base, that's between three significant figures. So that's 0 0.03966. That's what I have on my calculator. So I'm approximating to 0 0.0397 mole per dm. That's sorted. Okay, concentration of B. That's sorted. Now, what do I have now? The next question. Concentration of this B in gram per DMP. Very important now. Concentration of B in gram. Meet me to wrap up this place. I expect us to have written this at home. But you pause the video to write the question so that you can do something on your own. Okay, so concentration of B in gram per DMQ. That's the question. Concentration of B in gram per DMQ. Remember in the question. They gave us 1.05 gram in 250. I hope you get that. In the question, do you remember? They gave us 1.05 gram in 250 of B. That's what they gave us. And I've said that so many times, several times. I've said that, that the standard measurement in the chemistry laboratory or when you are preparing a solution is 1 DMP. But now they are giving us in 250. So they're now asking us, what is the concentration of, gram, of B in gram per DMP? Look at this. This is gram per 250 centimeter cube. So they are asking us in gram per DMP, which is 1,000. Because 1 DMQ is equal to 1,000 centimeter cube. I hope you are following. So I will now say, from here, which is from my number 4, I will say 1.05 gram is in 250 centimeter cube. So in 1,000 centimeter cube, I will have x. So we would have used the max directly if they have said 0 0.05 gram per DMQ. We would have used the max directly without converting it to 1,000. But now they have specified 1.05 gram in 250. You can do 1.05 gram in 500. You need to convert it back to 1,000. So from here, we press multiply. And our x, which is our mass now, becomes what? Becomes 1.05 times 1,000 over 250. Then, what is our mass now? Let's see. 1.05 times 1,000 divided 250. That's giving us 4.20. That's 4.2. That's it at 4.20 gram per dm. Which is what the muscles do. Very that. So then, I hope you are following. Now, the next question says that's why you have to be very careful when you are calculating when it comes to volumetric analysis because one mistake can render all your solutions useless or wrong. One mistake can render everything. Imagine you did not get the equation of reaction, definitely this will be wrong because we do not know the number of acid to base. So you have to be very careful when you are doing this because one mistake can actually, you know, can just rupture all what you have done or what you have been doing. So you have to pay attention to it. So the relative atomic mass of X now, which is Roman figure 5 now, relative atomic mass of X, don't forget, they want us to get the relative atomic mass of X because what they give us for X is X to C O. I will see that now. So what they want us to get the relative atomic mass because it's not even included yet. You can see. 
It's not included here because they know they want to give you to actually suffer it. So how do we get that? We know that our mole, the same formula there, is equal to our mass over molar mass. I hope you are following. Now we have the mole, okay? 0 0.0397. Can you see? We have the mass 4.20. So we can use it to look for the molar mass. So the molar mass first becomes our mass over our what? Our mole. I hope you are following. So and what is our mass? Please indicate it so that they know you are they know you know what you are doing. 4.0 gram per dm cube. What is our mole? Our mole is 0 0.0397 mole per dm cube. I hope you are following. So from here, let me change my marker. So that's it. So from here, our molar mass. Our molar mass becomes what is the mass? 4.20 gram per dm cube. Okay? Over our mole is 0 0.0397 mole per dm cube. I hope you are following. So let's see what our molar mass is now. What's our molar mass now? Let's see. What's our molar mass? 4.20 divide 0. 39, sorry, 4.20 divide 0 0.0397. That's giving us 105. 105.79. So let's just say 105.8. Let's just have it like that. Because it's 79. So let's say 8 gram per. This is not what they ask us to look for. They ask us to look for the relative atomic mass of S, but we must get the molar mass of this compound first. We want to get the molar mass of this compound. Then from the molar mass of this compound, we can determine the atomic mass of X. I, I think that's clear, you know. So from there now, we now say our X to CO3 is equal to, this is the molar mass, 105.8. So from here, our X, okay, our x times 2, our x times 2, that will give us 2x plus our carbon. You can see that our carbon is given there already, that's 12, plus our oxygen is given 16 times 3 equals 105.8. I hope you are following. So from there, you are going to have 2x plus 12 plus 48 equals 105.8. So from here we have two x plus this plus this that will give us sixty equals one of five point eight. I hope you are following. Let me just rub up this. Okay. So from here now we now have two x equals you know take this one to this side. So we have one of five point eight minus sixty. So 2x becomes 105.8 minus 60. What's it giving us? 105.8 minus 60. That's giving us 45. 45.8. So our x becomes 45.8 divided by 2. So that's our x. That's 22. 22.9. And can we guess that, chemistry student, 22.9, if the atomic mass of X is 22.9, which is approximately enough, you know, we are approximating to whole number, that will give us 23. And what is the atomic mass of the element? Which element has the atomic mass 23? Definitely our X here. Is what is sodium? Sodium has atomic mass 23. Can we see that? So the titration is clear. The question is clear. For you getting 23, it means that your title value is correct. That's the implication. It means that because if your titration is wrong, if your average volume of acid use is wrong, definitely you will not get 23. You will not get 23 or you will not even get answer closer or close to 23. And don't actually worry yourself. Sometimes you can have, you know, human errors when you are titrating. Some people can have maybe 22.1. 
can see South Africa have 22.1. You are still closer to 23 because, of course, there might be human error from you titrating and stuff like that. But the actual answer is at 23, which can be 22.9, 23.1, 23.0, 23.3. You understand that? But just to for you to see how this thing is done. The question can come in different form, but if you follow, if you really on that, understand what I have been doing, then you should not find the question difficult. So that is that. So the next question now is that volume of CO2 liberated at STP. Volume of CO2 liberated at STP. Definitely they will give you something like this. For this, you know, they'll give you something like this MV, which is 22.4. GMP. We'll give you something like for you, some of you that you might not remember, which is molar volume. You know the molar volume of gases is 22.4 DMP at STP. So let's work out that question. Volume of CO2 liberated at STP. Let's work out that question. Okay. How do I get this? Please, you have to pay attention to this. Volume of CO2 liberated at STP. That's the next question. Volume of CO2 liberated at STP. How do I get that? If you check your 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 question, they have not given you anything, or they did not give you anything as regards CO2. We call that stoichiometry. Yeah, we call that stoichiometry in chemistry. That's where you are relating, you are looking at the relationship between reactants and product. But what do I have, how do I like calculate the volume of CO2 liberated at STP? Okay, now if you look at this, your CO2 will be liberated from this trisocarbonate. That's point number one. Your CO2 will be liberated from this trisocarbonate. So I can use the value of this trisocarbonate to get what they are asking me as regards CO2. So let's see that now. So the first thing will be the volume of CO2 liberated as STP from the equation, from the equation of reaction. Okay, one mole of X2CO3 gave us one mole of CO2 gas. I hope that fact is established from the equation of reaction. One mole of this gave one mole of this. So if one mole of this gave one mole of that, it means that this is the concentration of this. It means that is 0 0.0397 of this. We give also 0.0397 of CO2. I hope this is clear. If one mole of x to CO3 gave one mole of CO2, it means that 0.0397 of, of x to CO3 we give 0.0397 of CO2. I hope that is clear. And we know, because we are giving you your molar volume, which is 22.4 GMP. So, if one mole of this gives one mole of this, 0 0.0397 of this will give this. I hope that is clear. But we know that one mole, what they ask us is what? Is the volume, not the mole. But we want to relate our mole to molar volume. Because we know one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 dmq. So one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 dmq. We know that already. To be given molar volume is 22.4. So our 0 0.0397 moles of CO2, you can see the way I'm getting values for CO2 now, be equal to x. So what do I do? I'll cross multiply. My x becomes 0 0.0397 times 22.4. Let's see what our answer is 0 .0, 0 0.0397 times 22.4. That's giving us our x, our x becomes 0 0.88928. Let me just approximate. 889 dmq of CO2. Now, the mistake most people will make is this. They will stop here. That is, this is the volume of CO2 liberated at STP. No, this, you have not finished solving the question. This is an halfway. Why? Because this is saying 0 0.889 dmq, meaning that the trisocarbonate we used is 1 dmq, which is wrong. We prepared 1 dmq, but the portion of B we used for the titration is 25 centimeter cube. Please pay attention to this place. 
because the volume of pipette, I was pipetting 25 centimeter cube of B for the reaction. And don't forget, we said it is this that liberated this. It is the presence of this that liberated CO2. So, but here is telling us mole per dm cube, which is mole per one dm cube, which is 1,000 centimeter cube. Which means that the volume of CO2 that will be liberated if I had used one dm cube of this is this. I hope we are getting that. That the volume of CO2 that will be liberated if I had used 1,000 centimeter cube of the base will be this. But I did not use 1,000 centimeter cube of the base. I used 25. So I need to get which amount will be 25. So I will say if in 1,000 centimeter cube or in one dm cube the volume of CO2 liberated is 0 0.889 dm cube. You can use any one. You can say if in one dm cube, the one used is 0 0.89 dm cube. Any one you want to use. But I'm using centimeter cube so that you understand. So 1,000 centimeter cube. In 1,000 centimeter cube, which is the same thing as one dm cube, the volume of CO2 liberated is 0 0.889 dm cube. So in 25 centimeter cube now, which is the volume of pipettes I used to titrate this very particular acid. So 25 centimeter cube is going to be what? It's going to be X. So the volume of CO2 liberated in 1,000 centimeter cube is this. What will be liberated in 25, which is the one I use? So it becomes X will be 25 times 0 0.889. Okay? 25 times 0 0.889 divide 1,000. So from here, what are we going to have? And we have. 0 0.889 times 25 divide 1000. That is 0 0.0222, approximately now, 222 dm. So the volume of CO2 liberated in 1 dm cube, which is 1000 centimeter cube, is 0 0.889 dm cube. But because I didn't use 1000, centimeter cube or one dm cube, I use 25, which is this, the volume of the pipe, the volume of CO2 that will be So, volume of CO2 liberated at STP, at STP, will be 0 0.0222 dm. That's the answer, which is this. So, please, I want to encourage us, that's just it. I want to encourage us if you are writing NECO, or if, if you are not writing NECO, you are a secondary school student, please go over this over and over again. I have said it. If you follow strictly, if you adhere strictly to what is being taught on this channel, all those exams, you are not going to find it difficult. And that's the reason why I take my time to actually do the practical one after the other and predict likely questions that we are going to meet on that day. So the question you are going to get on that day might not even be as tough as this, okay? So please go over this over and over again. Take a pen, put something down, solve something. If you have any question, use the comment section box, the comment box to ask your question. I will reply as fast as possible, okay? During my lecture time, I will reply down. So please, I beg you, just take your time to check the video over and over again, watch the video over and over again so that you can get used to all these things. So if you have followed all this that I have taught you, then you should not find the question difficult. So if you are just watching this channel for the first time, please do well to subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell so that when I actually upload any video, you would be notified. You still have a lot of things that we are going to be doing on this channel. I'm, still, I'm going to take my time. Some people have chatted me, they produced the comment section, they chatted me privately for me to start the organic chemistry series. We're going to start that sooner. Some people said we need stoichiometry, like the one we met here, okay? Like they need me to teach stoichiometry. Just any topic you want me to teach, use the comment box section to tell me the topic so that I can make a list of those topics and start, you know, creating content so that I can actually serve us better. I love you. For my subscribers, I love you guys. Thanks for the comment. Thanks for the prayers. Thanks for the word of motivations. I love you guys. And I will not stop doing my best as far as this channel is concerned. For the NECO student, I wish you success. That will be all for today. Love you guys. Thank you.